I'll never forget the best piece of business advice I ever received. It was 2016 and I was working on an exhaustive list of steps to get my digital business off the ground. And by the time I hit 15 steps, I wanted to throw up. I was utterly overwhelmed with the process of trying to start a business. That's when I called my mentor for help. He told me to get a new piece of paper and start over, but this time to only write down one step. And after that, he told me to complete that step before putting another one on my list. You see, you only need to know how to complete the very first step in front of you in order to succeed in business. That's really the secret to get ahead. So I'm gonna be walking you through the first three major steps today to getting your business off the ground. So if you have no idea what you wanna do, I designed this first worksheet specifically for that. But even if you do know what you wanna do, I encourage you to watch this section anyway. And these days, 99% of businesses out there are gonna start off as a side hustle, something you do alongside your job or current source of income. Well, picking a business opportunity is a lot like dating. There's an endless list of opportunities out there. And if you don't know what you're looking for, this can be extremely overwhelming and possibly problematic. So in the same way that it's not a good idea to just throw yourself into a crowd bar and go home with a stranger, you shouldn't whimsically just pick a business idea either and dive right in. This process is designed to help you find the specific criteria that you're looking for in your business, similar to what you might be looking for in a romantic partner. And you need to know what you're looking for before putting yourself out there. Otherwise, everything looks like an opportunity. So let's get started with the first worksheet. We want to figure out the characteristics that you're looking for out of your ideal business or what's really going to be a side hustle initially. And so a few examples of this could be online based, no customer service, out in nature, location independent, animal lover, or feel free to come up with your own as well. So my personal first characteristic would be time freedom because I personally hate getting up in the morning uh, and being on a set schedule. Next, I would personally wanna be able to work from anywhere in the world. So my second characteristic is going to be location independent. And finally, we're gonna finish off with the characteristic of recurring revenue, and this often comes from a subscription or membership type business. So now we have our criteria and we know what we're looking for, but it's time to now travel back many, many years to your childhood and think back to your childhood passions. You see, one of the biggest lessons I've learned in business over the years is that the key to sticking it out long term with a business venture is tying it in with one of your passions. However, blindly following your passions rarely translates to success. So instead, we're going to find your profitable passions. So first of all, what is a passion? This is something that you find yourself to be endlessly curious about over long spans of time. And these may be things that you've put on the back burner in life for now, but you always find yourself revisiting them or thinking about them over the years. So for this part of the worksheet, I want you to think about your childhood and adult passions without even remotely thinking about profitability or how you'd make money with them, because we're just looking to come up with a list of six of your lifelong passions. And then we're going to figure out which of these are your profitable passions. So back to the worksheet, I'm going to go with these passions. Number one is going to be off-road Jeeps. Number two is going to be acoustic guitar. Three is going to be freshwater fishing. Number four, a popular one that is video games. Number five is going to be woodworking. And then finally for number six, we have camping. But now we do need to start thinking about money, a necessary evil in life. But how do you figure out which of your passions can make you money versus just feeding your soul. And to figure that out, we're going to need our next worksheet, which is the quality bar worksheet. And we're going to come back to this one in a little bit. So before you pursue a given niche in business, you absolutely need to know two things. Number one, how profitable is the niche? And number two, how competitive is it? So the next step here is to take that list of passions and then analyze the competition. And we're going to do that for three of those passions. And so the goal of the quality bar worksheet is for you to be able to take a passion of yours or even a business opportunity that you were considering pursuing and then be able to look through and determine if it's profitable and also if it's extremely competitive or not because you're going to want to make sure you're able to at least meet the minimum level of quality in that particular business niche but hopefully be able to exceed what everyone else out there is doing. So for example number one here we're going to go with our off-road Jeeps. 
Now, as far as a business in this particular niche, going out and creating your own off-road Jeep accessory is going to be a pretty heavy lift. But starting a resource that reviews and gives information about accessories that already exist is a very viable business option. So that's what we're gonna look into. So the idea here would be making content about existing Jeep accessories and then linking out to them on Amazon and other websites and then earning commissions in the process. So we're gonna look at existing Jeep accessory blogs and see how competitive this particular niche is. So we have this incognito window open and we're just going to type in Jeep accessories and we're gonna see what is pretty much the top blog out there in this niche. Coming up with the top link here that's not an ad is lovethytruck.com and this is top 101 best Jeep Wrangler accessories for 2023. So this would be your immediate and direct competition. So let's go ahead and analyze this using the quality bar worksheet. So for starters, does the business have a professional logo? Well, yes, they do. They have a professional looking logo. Not only that, they also have um, content that has really good branding on it and just, uh, you know, nice looking text. So we're going to say they definitely have that. So I'm going to put that as like a yes plus because they're like beyond just having a professional logo here. So next up, do they have a website? Well, it's a blog, so of course they have a website, but we're gonna figure out, is it a good website or not? Every single accessory mentioned here has a segment on it and then images, and this is probably five or 6,000 words, and I think there's 101 Jeep accessories mentioned. So I would say that this article is pretty good. It would definitely be useful. And then if we go to the homepage of their website, overall, this is a pretty good website. It's uh, easy to navigate, and so we're gonna say that yes, they have a pretty good website. Next, we're going to look into social media, and most businesses are going to put their social media at the bottom in the footer of their website, so we'll check that now. So looking at the bottom of the website, I'm not seeing any social media links, so I would say that they don't seem to be leveraging social media, so boom. If you were able to basically compete with that content that was already out there, but then also leverage social media, there's your leg up on the competition. We're going to say no, they do not seem to have any social media, or if they do, it's certainly not being linked to from their website. So now we're going to think about what things they're doing well and then what they could improve upon. So I would say they're doing a really good job here with their images since we have a clear view of everything that they're talking about. But there's definitely one thing they could improve upon in a major way and it's a simple detail that would make this so much better and that is a simple table of contents. I'm not seeing a table of contents here so when you come across this article you simply have to just scroll through this massive, massive list of 101 items. And if you could add a simple table of contents, which you can in WordPress, you could make a much better piece of content here, assuming you had similar content with a table of contents. So let's write that here at what could be improved upon would be a table of contents. So here's my favorite part of this particular worksheet. You now take all of this information that we collected and this is a bar that you shade in to basically give yourself a visual representation of where that quality bar is. And based on the information collected, you know, you could pretty much get a leg up on them using things like table of contents and maybe categorizing information better and also leveraging social media. So we're gonna say the quality bar for this one is pretty much if you were to shade this half of the way. It's not gonna be the easiest niche, but it's also not the most competitive. And as far as money to be made, seeing as you can link directly to all of those products on Amazon, I mean, I can just tell you from personal experience, there is money to be made in these Amazon affiliate blogs. But if you weren't sure, you know, you could just do additional research. So now we're going to do the same exact thing for our next passion from worksheet one, which was acoustic guitar. Now, as far as businesses you could start here, it's a little bit more limited. I mean, you could start a music store, but these days it's going to require a loan and be pretty difficult. But we're going to go with a pretty simple business here, which is simply offering guitar tutoring. So we're going to do a random city generator and then fill out the quality bar worksheet for a guitar tutoring business in that particular area. Click generate places and we'll go with the very top one. So Angleton, Texas, I've never heard of that place, but we're going to look into a guitar tutoring tutoring business in Angleton, Texas now. So what we're going to type into Google here is Angleton, Texas guitar lessons and then 
then click on enter and we're gonna see what shows up. So Collins Music Center, that seems to offer lessons, but let's scroll through and see if there's any business websites actually offering lessons in that area. So the first actual local business in that area that I came across was this Musicians Academy. So let's go ahead and fill out the quality bar worksheet for this business now. First of all, do they have a professional logo? Yes, it looks like a pretty good logo to me. And it looks like this is also a combination of a business that has a digital footprint and also has a brick and mortar location where they offer lessons. As far as the website, I would say it's a really good website. I mean, they have FAQs, they have a lot of content about their business, and they have all of these different lessons that they're offering. So they're offering quite a bit here. Now let's look into social media. Let's scroll down to the very bottom and see. And in this case, we are finding social media links. And based on this, um, they've posted twice, or is this potentially just people who have tagged them? I don't know that this is actually a page. Let's take a look and see if they have a YouTube channel. They have a page here where they've posted, it looks like four times over the last couple of years, 2,900 likes here and 3,000 followers. So we're gonna say that they are active on it looks like definitely Facebook. They could use some work on YouTube and they don't seem to be on Instagram whatsoever. So we're gonna take those notes on the quality bar worksheet. So this company may not have everything figured out with social media, but they do have a brick and mortar business and that's honestly a pretty high quality bar. So we're gonna fill this one out pretty much two thirds here because unless you're gonna be offering lessons where you're going to people's houses or bringing people to your home, you are gonna need an actual space to do that. Maybe you could do it virtually. I would just think as well that may not be as high paying if you pretty much just have to do one-on-one -on -one lessons. If you wanna scale the business, you're gonna need an actual location. So this is a pretty high quality bar. And so finally, this leaves us with the passion of freshwater fishing. You could definitely start a blog, but we've covered that already. So let's think about a different type of business you could start with this passion. So how about catfish farming? It sounds kind of weird, but a lot of people are eating catfish these days. And you could pretty easily tie in an e-commerce component where you pack, freeze, and then ship this catfish all over the country. I found a catfish farm operating in Mississippi, and that is TJ's Fish Farm. So first of all, does this company have a professional professional logo. Somebody took a picture of a sign in a kitchen and so that's not a logo. We're going to definitely say that's a no. Right off the bat, not secure. That's a big problem and it's a simple fix. The SSL certificate. People who are going to this website might be getting hit with a wall that says this is not safe simply because they don't have SSL encryption. They do offer large and small orders of tilapia and catfish, but you'd have to schedule an appointment here and email them basically to place an order. There's no simple way on the website to order. Based on having two subscribers, I would say it's not very effective use of YouTube. So as far as our quality bar for the freshwater fishing and in particular the catfish farming business here that we looked at, we're gonna shade this with a about one third full. So that's a pretty low quality bar. So by filling out our quality bar worksheet here with three passions from our list, we've really figured out a lot of information. We have an idea about how competitive these different niches are. We have figured out how people are making money with these things as a passion. And so now we're gonna go back to that first worksheet and we're gonna continue continue on with that process with this newfound information. What we're gonna do is follow step three here, which is to circle the passions on your list that are most likely to make you money, and this is going to be what we call your profitable passions. So after doing the quality bar research on the off-road Jeeps niche, there's definitely money to be made there, so we're gonna go ahead and circle that on our list first of all. Looking at the acoustic guitar business, that one would definitely be trickier because you're gonna need an actual location. I don't think there's a tremendous amount of money to be made in acoustic guitar lessons, at least in just operating your own little gig, unless you're just trying to make some money on the side. We're going to rule that one out and we're going to move on to the freshwater fishing niche. We're going to circle that as well. There's definitely money to be made with that particular passion. So now that we have two profitable passions on our list, we now have to go back to step number one, which was the very criteria that we're looking for in the first place. And we now have to do a gut check here and figure out if either of these profitable passions match up with the criteria we're looking for out of a business opportunity. So let's start off with time freedom. Well, you could easily accomplish this with a digital accessory review business for Jeep accessories. So that definitely would fit that criteria. And as far as the freshwater fishing and the fish farming, well, if you partnered with an existing farm and just simply ran their e-commerce side of the business, you could still have time freedom. And then as far as the characteristic of location independent, that would be possible with both of those businesses we just talked about. 
talked about. But when we get down to our final characteristic here of recurring revenue, this is where we're going to be narrowed down to just one of our profitable passions. And that's because it's going to be very difficult to build recurring revenue into an accessory review blog or even content channel. And that's because you're going to be at the mercy of the algorithms and also just people's shopping behaviors. And so unless you're going to go out and maybe launch an app or something, which is going to be a really heavy lift, it's going to be very difficult to get a consistent monthly recurring revenue with that business model. So we now have to officially rule it out. So we're going to move forward now with the profitable passion of freshwater fishing, looking at the business of starting a catfish farm, but in particular one that offers a monthly subscription. And so this leads us to our final worksheet now, my personal favorite, which is the MVP worksheet. And this is where we figure out how to actually launch the business and start solving a problem that exists in the market. And how you're going to be doing this is by testing the market with something called an MVP or minimum viable product. So this strategy was popularized by a book called The Lean Startup, and this is actually how many startups go about a market test today. And your MVP is your most basic representation of a solution to a problem. The purpose is to get quick feedback from the market in the most efficient manner as possible. Now you might have a business idea that's going to offer multiple solutions to a series of different problems, and that's totally fine. But for now, I need you to focus on one problem and then one solution. So let's go ahead and start filling out this worksheet here for that catfish farming business in order to launch our MVP. So the first question on the worksheet is what problem am I solving? And so what we're going to write for our business is it's difficult to get access to catfish if you're not in Mississippi, for example, unless you're going to a fish market or something, you're not going to really find catfish at your local grocery store. So the next question asks you, how can you solve this problem as simply as possible? And so doing things as simply as possible is going to rule out this idea of starting our own catfish farm. So partnering with an existing catfish farm and then launching the e-commerce side of their business basically as a partner would be the simplest manner. So we're going to write down partnering with an existing catfish farm. Step number three is to create the solution or a visual representation of what the solution would be. And that's going to be the better option 99% of the time because you want to bootstrap and not invest resources into what might not be a good idea. And that's really the whole point of this MVP is to just get a test out there to the market, see how it's received. And then down here, we're going to go through the three possible outcomes after we do a real live market test. We're actually going to do this and get real feedback from strangers. So you're going to want to stay tuned. So let's jump into my computer now and get started with a Google Slides presentation. What we're going to use for the title slide here, we don't necessarily need a name for the business, but we're just going to say farm fresh catfish delivered. We're going to move into the next section, which is going to be the main information about our idea. Farm fresh catfish is growing in popularity as more people explore alternative diets. However, sourcing catfish can be difficult outside of Mississippi, that is. We're launching a subscription-based recurring delivery service for farm fresh catfish. And so it just clearly defines the problem, our potential solution. Click here, right click, and then we're going to actually replace this image. And then what I love about slides is you can literally search the web in the right hand side. So that's just how easy this is. And so for the other graphic here, we're going to replace this with a calendar just to sort of represent the recurring nature of the subscription. And we're going to probably add some graphics on top of this as well. And so there we go. You could definitely spend more time here. You could even whip up a logo if you wanted to. But for the MVP, we just want people to be able to get an idea of what we're thinking about. The last thing I want to do is jump over here and just bold our key points. But finally here, we're going to finish off with something asking people for feedback on this idea. And we're actually going to set up a Google form where we're going to be taking people's feedback through that. And then we're going to send this out to real people for a 24 hour market test. So over on Google forms now, we're going to start out with our survey and we're going to keep it very, very simple. That way we get hopefully a high level of participation. Would you consider subscribing to this service if it actually was offered and it's recurring frozen catfish delivery? And we're going to make this a yes, maybe or no question just to give people three different options. What would be your 
delivery frequency, preference, weekly, monthly, every six months, etc. And we're gonna make this a short answer. We're gonna make it required. And then over here in Google Slides, it's going to be very clear for people that they can click and take the two minute survey. And we're gonna also bold that. That way they know it's a very, very short survey. Alrighty, so now it's time for us to share this presentation in a couple of different subreddits that I found that I think are gonna be able to get us some actual feedback. So the first post is gonna go in Reddit Pescatarian and it says, looking for feedback on a fish delivery business idea. Sort of spells out the basic high level idea and then has a link to the presentation. So the next post is going in the subreddit fish and it's basically the same thing, looking for feedback on a fish delivery business idea. And then our final Reddit post here is gonna go in the subreddit business ideas. I'm hoping this one really gets a lot of activity as this has like 150,000 people. So here we are on Quora and I can't guarantee what's gonna happen here because this is all happening live as it's being recorded. But I'm gonna post here on Quora and ask for the same type of feedback. Would you subscribe to a farm fresh catfish delivery service? And then we're gonna click on add question. So we ran into a roadblock here. I can't actually link to my Google Slides presentation, but we're still gonna leave the question out there because people may still answer it. So we'll check back in tomorrow and see if we get any comments about the business idea. It's time to give things 24 hours and then we'll check in on the results of our MVP. Okay guys, so it's now been 24 hours and so now we're going to assess the feedback by looking at any form submissions we got as well as comments on the Reddit posts and any responses that we got over on Quora. So starting off here looking at the Google Forms, we ended up getting 10 responses, which I was super pleased with seeing as these are complete strangers where we were providing them with absolutely no incentive other than just asking them for their feedback. So if we go over to responses, we can see a a really nicely organized data set here for all of our information. So the first question we asked people was, would you consider subscribing to this if it's actually offered? And we ended up getting 50% of the entire group saying maybe. We had 10% or just one person say yes, and then four or 40% saying no. So we're gonna continue reading here, but right off the bat, I'm gonna say that we didn't hit the nail on the head here in terms of finding something that people actually want. The maybe is interesting because it tells me that we are probably close and people might want something similar, but I don't think we're quite there yet, seeing as only one person said yes to this. What would be your delivery frequency preference? We said weekly, monthly, every six months, etc. People are either looking like they want it to be monthly or probably quarterly. And then lastly, we have the long form section where people left us their feedback. And this is where I think we're going to get probably the best insights. So the first person said they'd be looking for more than just catfish, to be honest. That's a very valuable insight. The next person said, I don't eat catfish, it's nasty. So this person would be definitely in the no category. Make the brand identity feel like it's all locally sourced. So that's a really solid idea there. Next here, this person said, why can't people just use their local fish market or store? And they certainly can, but we were thinking of basically offering the convenience of the recurring delivery if that's something that the market would find valuable. And so far, at least with catfish, I don't think they would find it to be very valuable. The next response said, I think this is a good idea because when I was living in Kentucky, all the fish people ate was catfish. However, I feel like it would be best to market this towards restaurants as well because I feel like I've never seen someone specifically wanting and failing to find some catfish to eat. Good luck with your endeavors. So that's a really solid point. I mean, maybe it's something that people are just not actively seeking out and perhaps going after the B2B play of selling it to other restaurants. Maybe that is the move here. So it's just another potential vertical or MVP to consider for basically a future iteration of what this business might look like. There's some people that really just don't like to eat it and there's definitely some health concerns to look into as well about the PCBs or mercury levels. We honestly got a ton of great feedback here. Now let's jump over to Quora and see if we got any responses to the question placed over there. We did still get one response and this person said a uh, very firm no. I can just walk down to the river and snag one. So this person is probably from Mississippi or something but I'm just not fond of eating them anyway. They are a the low life of culinary fish. Based on some of the other feedback we've received, it's sort of hard to argue with that. Okay, so we completed all of the steps here on the MVP worksheet, except for step number seven, which is testing your potential solution with paid traffic. We sort of did a workaround here by using Reddit and maybe 10 responses wouldn't be a large enough, you know, sample size for actually pursuing an idea, but I think it's enough for us to figure out that we really didn't have the perfect idea with this first MVP. So I just don't think it would be valuable to put money into ad spend, but maybe Maybe if you went back to the drawing board and came up with a different solution, maybe then it would be worth it to do paid traffic. 
so this leads us to the next section, which is the three potential outcomes of our MVP. Outcome number one is that the market isn't interested in your solution at all. And that's not the case here because we had a decent amount of maybes. We only had one yes, but it seems like people liked the subscription aspect of locally sourced fish, just not so much the catfish. So outcome number two is that the market is interested in a different solution. This is the most common and this is exactly where we landed is that we didn't quite get it with this, but we got a lot of data. And maybe if we were to say, okay, maybe freshwater fish isn't the idea, but if we can maybe partner with a saltwater fish farm or, or something like that, or a saltwater fish market and do the e-commerce side of their business and offer subscription-based delivery of that, and then maybe even building in, you know, meal delivery as a future MVP or future vertical of that business, future solution to a problem. It just gives you, you know, stepping stones of where you could go with that business. And then outcome number three, it's the most uncommon. It's that the market is interested in your solution. And that just really wasn't the case here. It was a close but no cigar situation. And that's what the MVP is really helpful for. Because if I didn't, you know, test this very quickly, just think about how much time I could have wasted on this idea of the catfish farming when I could have been close in terms of the idea and would I have just pivoted into saltwater fish or something, perhaps that's a much better idea. But from here, I would recommend doing another MVP with the saltwater fish idea, seeking out further feedback. And then if you get more yeses and you definitely think you've landed in outcome three of having the market interested in your solution, that is when you would definitely consider paid traffic. And then if the paid traffic matches up with those results, that's when you could consider pursuing that business idea further. Just like that, you now know how to start a business business with this very simple three-step process. Now, of course, the one question you probably have is how do you get your hands on a copy of these worksheets? Well, these are a free bonus that come along with my book From Side Hustle to Main Hustle to Millionaire, and that is available both in person at Barnes & Noble stores and on Amazon. And if you flip to the very back of that book, there is a secret link that leads to our private Discord community where you can communicate with me and other side hustlers out there. And within that community, we have all of these worksheets available to download. Now, these are are just the first three and we have about a dozen worksheets planned and we're going to be releasing three every quarter. So the next set of worksheets are going to be coming out in April, somewhere around there. So definitely stay tuned for those. I am excited to communicate with you guys over in the discord and help you get your business off the ground. If you enjoyed this video, guys, this book is really for you because the worksheets are based on the book and this video is based on the worksheets. So you really just got a very small taste of what's in store with my full length book. I also have an author narrated version on Audible. So if you prefer to listen, you can hear me narrate it. Definitely multiple avenues to explore if you are interested in joining and you can still get access to the worksheets in the Discord community through Audible or the um, ebook format, no matter what. If you got value out of this video, please share it with one person out there who might be interested in either starting a business or maybe just getting better focused in life on, you know, what they want to do. And I know we didn't cover all of the aspects of starting a business, like forming an LLC and opening up a business bank account. But trust me, guys, that's the easy stuff. That's the stuff you can literally just Google search or watch a five minute YouTube video. What we covered here is the important stuff. It's making sure that you don't go to the market with a bad idea or just go into something thinking that that you have, you know, what is a great solution and you're almost there, but you waste a bunch of time and money and resources because you were off by five degrees. So I'm telling you guys, this is the most important part. The rest can happen in a step-by-step -step manner, like we talked about earlier. You lay out the next step, you complete that step, and then you figure out the next step in business, and that is how you get ahead. Make sure you subscribe, hit that bell, and turn on all notifications for future business videos just like this, and I hope to see you next time.